Welcome back. A year and a half ago, Catherine McBride's family received a devastating diagnosis, and today she's sharing her son's experience with spinal muscular atrophy, also known as SMA. It's a rare, devastating genetic disease that's also a leading genetic cause of infant death. Early diagnosis and treatment transformed her son's life. Also joining me, Dr. Sandy Rainier, Vice President of Global Medical Affairs at Novartis Gene Therapies, and we're going to talk about the signs and the importance of newborn screening and treatment options for SMA. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both for joining me. Let me start with you, Dr. Reina. What is SMA uh, and what are the signs and symptoms? Well, thank you, Audrey, for your question and thank you for uh, having me uh, join you today. So as you said nicely enough, uh, SMA or spinal muscular atrophy is a, is a very rare and devastating genetic disease. It is generally caused by the lack of a functional survival motor neuron one gene. So it's also called SMN1 gene. When uh, left untreated, uh, it really progress, it's a very uh, aggressive and progressive disease, which causes muscle weakness and paralysis. And it's uh, definitely in its most severe form, uh, permanent ventilation, uh, or death uh, may occur in these children in 90% of the time. Uh, and usually this, this happens before the age of two. So early diagnosing SMA is absolutely critical. One of the main symptoms that you'll see in these children for the most part is um, weakness, right? So you have children who are not able to move their muscles uh, or move their limbs, um, and even as simple as head control, uh, which can also be uh, uh, affected by having these children not able to breathe on their own and so therefore ventilatory support is most likely needed very early in their life. And it's genetic. So how and when is it diagnosed? Right, so um, diagnosis is made uh, through a blood sample, right? So this can certainly be done um, after birth, uh, which is a newborn screening. It can also be done prenatally if there's already history of SMA within the family. Um, and this is a very simple test that is done, is done uh, after the children are born. So in the first 48 hours after birth, uh, we, you know, most, all babies go through newborn screening. And now SMA is part of that panel. Well, thank goodness, Catherine. Um, you were really blessed to find out. Uh, tell us about your family's experience with your son, Connor. Yes, we were very lucky to have newborn screening in Massachusetts, where we live. Um, and I had opted in to newborn screening prior to Connor's birth. Connor is a twin, so he was born uh, at the beginning of March in 2020, just before the lockdown. And um, he actually uh, was screened one day after his birth. And uh, on day three, the screening came back and showed that he had spinal muscular atrophy, type one, which is the most serious, uh, type of the disorder. There are four types, I believe. Um, and so as a result, his neonatologist immediately contacted a specialist and he was transferred to a different hospital so he could be treated while he was still pre-symptomatic and, uh, and given an opportunity not only to survive, but also to, to be a normal, quote unquote, normal child and, and thrive. And, um, and so that was that was you know the beginning of our journey with this disease. We, we our other two children, as I said, our, his twin sister doesn't have it, and my older son does not have it. And I did not know I was a carrier for mutation. And my husband did not know either. So this was new to, to us. Catherine, you opted in for the screening and diagnosis early on, and there's a treatment called Zolgensma. Dr. Reina. Would you tell us all about that treatment and how impactful it was for Catherine and Connor? Um, Sunjelsma uh, was just recently approved by the FDA to treat spinal muscular atrophy. And uh, this uh, uh, treatment is usually um, given as soon as, as soon as possible, right? So that's the ideal. And the way Sunjelsma works is that it produces uh, a transgene, which now allows for that missing gene to be now given to this child through an intravenous injection. Um, and what it does, it, it allows for the SMN1 gene or the transgene to express a full length protein, uh, which uh, again, is really vital to the motor neurons and, and muscle. Um, so therefore, you know, treating babies as quickly as possible and identifying these babies early and providing a treatment that addresses the root cause of the disease 
it has shown through our clinical trial data that it, it provides uh, you know, motor, motor uh, function for these children to gain uh, the function that they would normally do, uh, would have if, if it hadn't been for this uh, genetic disorder. Does Zolgensma work for every child that's diagnosed? And what are some of the possible risks and benefits associated with the treatment? Right. So uh, right now in the U.S., uh, Zolgensma is uh, indicated for children under the age of two. Um, so therefore, if these children are screened as soon as they're born, and we're able to identify them. Um, all uh, children who are, you know, who qualify for this treatment uh, could possibly be treated with syngelsma. Again, I'd like to emphasize that, you know, syngelsma is the only genetic, um, uh, the only gene therapy available, but there are other therapies also available uh, to treat SMA, uh, which are not in, under this category. And some of the risks that we have seen uh, so far with the treatment of syngelsma is that some children uh, do have some side effects, uh, such as sometimes their liver reacts to the, the virus itself, the vector, and it, it elevates some of their enzymes. And so this is uh, definitely manageable, and uh, clinicians are learning more and more on how to treat these babies uh, even prior to giving some jasma. So they prepare the baby uh, to receive this treatment ahead of time, and they monitor these babies very closely to see any other possible side effects which again are incredibly manageable. Wow, to think that you can have an infusion to replace a gene is amazing. Catherine, what would you tell other parents and expected parents across the country about the importance of being screened? Uh, I would, and the reason I, I speak about this is, is just to educate anyone who is a, going to be a parent um, or already is a parent um, about this and, and I would say everyone needs to look into newborn screening and educate themselves on newborn screening, how to opt into newborn screening for your child, and then what to do uh, when you get the results. If the results shows a, you know, that your child does have a disorder, one of these disorders that's screened for, you know, have a have some idea of what to do um, in that in that scenario. Um, I think that's the most important thing um, as a parent that you could do. Well, I understand that not all states have uh, the screening available. What are some of the ways that expectant parents can advocate for themselves if their state doesn't screen for SMA, Catherine? Uh, so the first thing to do is to check to see if your state screens for SMA. And I believe there are 38 states now that uh, do screen for it. Uh, and so you can go to uh, CureSMA.org. Um, this is a wonderful uh, resource for all parents, anyone who's curious about newborn screening or SMA. Um, they have resources, so you can check to see uh, whether your state does screen. And then, like I said, if your state does screen for, for this disorder and these disorders, uh, just uh, know that you are your child's best advocate. And so you should kind of know what you would do and who to contact in case something comes up positive. Um, know, you know, about the specialists in your area, um, that type of thing. Ask your pediatrician questions um, about this. All pediatricians should, should know about this as well. Um, and so, you know, they should be educated as well. So make sure that, that your pediatrician um, it, it, you know, kind of has an idea about what to do um, post newborn screening results. Um, I think that's the most important thing because time is of the essence with this with these conditions. And so treatment as soon as possible is critical. Indeed it is. And Catherine, thank you for sharing your story and Connor's journey with us today. Dr. Reyna, where can we go for information about Zolgensma? Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, first of all, you may visit our, our website, Novartis uh, website, and, and you can literally uh, Google Sonjelsma and you'll be able to uh, get the information right from our own site. You can also go to patient advocate group sites such as CureSMA, uh, which does a marvelous job in really providing all pieces of information for possibly parents who are newly diagnosed uh, with SMA or even parents who already have a child affected by SMA. Catherine McBride and Dr. Sandy Reyna have been my guests, and we've been talking about spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA. It's a rare, devastating genetic disease, 
And it's also the leading genetic cause of infant deaths, but early diagnosis and treatment to transform lives is possible and available. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank, Thank you. you. There's more to come on Talk With Autry. I'll be right back.